Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ian Broom, and I'm going to be presenting a webinar today called Supercharge Virtual Events that Keep Audience Engaged and Are Easy to Set Up. So let's get started. This is me, Ian Broom. I'm the CEO of Fliplet. Uh, I think quite a few of you have met me before. Um, and today we're going to cover a brief Fliplet overview. So for those of you who are Fliplet customers, don't worry, you don't have to uh, get too mentally engaged for the first couple of minutes. Um, but for those of you who are new to Fliplet or haven't been involved in working on a Fliplet project, the introduction might be useful. Uh, then I'm going to cover what makes a great virtual event and how to overcome common challenges. I'm going to talk about the benefits of a virtual event app. And then I'm going to answer a number of how-to questions. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have a Q&A. Uh, how to use Zoom. I'm sure pretty much everybody on this Zoom call knows how to use Zoom by now, but just to be on the safe side, you can ask questions at any time by typing them into the chat. And you can see I've highlighted the chat button on the, the screenshot of Zoom below. Um, you can message Chris Longmuir in chat directly, privately, if you'd prefer to ask the question, but you don't want to post it in the public channel. Uh, and he will obviously uh, not mention your name uh, when he's describing the question later on. Um, so don't feel concerned about asking your question publicly. Please just share it with Chris directly. Uh, please stay on mute uh, and please keep your camera off. Uh, only, only throughout this webinar, we hope that you'll only see Chris and my beautiful faces. While I'm talking, please don't feel that you either have to go off and check your emails or do something else. We want you to uh, share your experiences with virtual events so far or comments on the, this presentation as I go through it via the Zoom chat. So, so please uh, interact with us uh, throughout the, the webinar. Don't feel like you, you have to just uh, listen to me talking. Uh, some of the slides that I'm going to present are a bit intense, but I wanted to make sure that I met everybody's expectations about covering all the features that our solution will offer. Um, if it's overwhelming or you've got any questions or I don't go into enough detail about any points, just mention them in chat and uh, my colleagues would be happy to, uh, to share additional information or bring it up in the Q&A at the end. So, Fliplet Overview. Fliplet is a tool for the rapid production of web and mobile apps. Uh, it is predominantly code free, but you can also customize the apps with code, which means the features that I'm going to be talking about in today's webinar, you are welcome to modify them. You don't have to use them in the method that I'm demonstrating. Fliplet has a broad set of capabilities um, and it's very easy to use them. You just drag them in and then you click on them to configure them. Fliplet apps can be distributed to all of the major mobile and web platforms, uh, including uh, web browsers, as well as private app stores. And Fliplet takes care of all the infrastructure for you. We ensure that your app is secure. We ensure that it stays online. We ensure uh, that your data is stored securely, etc. So without any further ado, let me take you into what we're planning on doing for Fliplet's virtual event app template. So what can this be used for? What we realized is that there are a large number of different types of events. And we're aware that a lot of our current customers uh, produce a significant number of events, or at least they did prior to the pandemic. So the types of apps that, sorry, the types of events you could use the virtual event app for include conferences, summits, summits retreats, et cetera. Uh, generally what I would describe as large events, um, say uh, upwards of, of 100 people. Um, and to be honest, there is really no limit uh, to how many people you could have attend your event. And I'll talk a little bit more about if there are any technical limitations uh, later on in the presentation. Um, and then there's also smaller events that you can use this for, such as webinars, seminars, roundtables, meetups, hackathons, etc. cetera. Um, things that you might not think, well, I wouldn't produce a, uh, an event app for it, so why would I use Fliplet's virtual event app for it? And I think as you, as you see what we're uh, intending to do, you'll probably realize like, oh, actually, Fliplet solution could bring a lot to smaller events as well. So why now? 
Companies still need to, even during a pandemic, communicate with their staff, market to and maintain contact with customers, run training sessions, maintain people's mental health through human interaction, and continue to deliver schedules events as planned. I think at the start of the pandemic, uh, kind of February, March, everybody put everything on hold. What we've definitely seen based on feedback from customers is they're sick of being on hold. They want to start doing things. They can't put off uh, partner events or uh, staff events. Uh, Fliplet at the moment is intending to run our annual event where we do strategic planning and, and have a bit of a, a Christmas social event. We're intending for all of that to become virtual as well. And I'm sure we're not the only company. So I think you could summarize why now is we're sick of not doing the stuff we had planned and we want to do it. And then the second why now, why a virtual event uh, is a significant increase in the last uh, six and seven months in comfort with digital tools. So everybody's comfortable with Zoom and Teams, uh, sometimes Slack as well. Uh, virtual events are becoming common because it's the only alternative that we have to real life events. Um, there are really no alternatives or excuses to not using uh, digital technology to run your event. And uh, they're tapping into this trend that's described as the new way of working. And of course, there's lots of conjecture at the moment about whether or not we're ever going to return to the office in the way that it was. And I've covered a little bit in this presentation about hybrid apps, which is a mixture of people on site at the event, as well as supporting virtual, which I think is also going to become uh, more popular uh, in the future. So how to meet demand for events or virtual events? Well, you've really got three options. You've got web conferencing software such as Zoom, but generally this has quite limited collaboration and uh, information sharing capabilities. It's really designed for broadcast, which is exactly what everybody's experiencing on today's webinar. You've also got Teams or Slack, Microsoft Teams is what I'm referring to there, um, but they are really awful if you want to bring people in outside your organization and, and they're very unstructured. So it's great for an ad hoc uh, staff catch up, but it's not great if you want to run a three day session. And then finally, you've got virtual event software, but based on conversations with our customers, uh, they're reporting that most are complicated to set up, most are complicated for, for attendees uh, to access. They can be very expensive and a lot of them have very limited brand control. They're really designed just to work the way they're designed to work and they really limit uh, how customized the experience can be. So what we've found, customers want control over their virtual event to differentiate the experience and achieve high engagement rates. And on the other side of the fence, we've found that attendees want simple solutions so they can focus on the content and meet other attendees. And throughout the rest of this presentation, you'll see that I really focus dividing, this is what organizers want, and this is what attendees want. Uh, and sometimes if there are other stakeholders as well, I'll mention them, because I think a holistic approach, a holistic solution is going to lead to the, the one that everybody enjoys using, which is critical when it comes to virtual events. So how will our solution help? This is the detailed set of criteria that we've come up with internally for event organizers. They want a, a virtual event solution that's easy to set up and manage, easy for attendees and speakers to, to access. They want it to retain attendees and preferably not put a huge amount of, of um, additional work on them. They want it to be brandable, themable, and differentiated. They don't want it to look like everybody else's event. They want it to work with existing CRM software or other systems such as databases. They want it to meet GDPR privacy and security laws, which I mentioned earlier, Fliplet does. They want analytics. They want to know what people are doing when they're engaging with their apps. They want to, to support small and large events. And as a bonus, they would love fixed cost so that they don't have to keep getting purchase orders every time they want to run a new event. But how will our solution help the other people, the attendees, the speakers, and exhibitors? So what we've prioritized is a solution that's easy to use, familiar, engaging, uh, it offers easy to access support. It offers human interaction at multiple points throughout the event. So you're never feeling that you're either being talked at or that you're lonely. We're focused on delivering a high value, time worthy experience. We're doing our best to make it as visually impressive as possible. And you'll see me having some fun with the upcoming themes in a little bit. Uh, 
it's got to be secure because that's just a standard expectation now. And of course it has to meet privacy expectations and of course legislation. So we're gonna focus on all of these attributes. And as I go through, you'll see how we're meeting some of them. So the goal of a virtual events platform, we realized is to integrate multiple features into a seamless and engaging experience for organizers and attendees. It basically has to be the best of a real world event moved on to digital with as many points of friction uh, removed as possible. And that's because let's face it, our patience and our tolerance has decreased as we've all become more familiar with using online tools. We don't tolerate uh, network problems or connection problems anywhere near as much as we used to because we all expect that we are on top of these problems now. And this virtual event solution has to meet those expectations or I, I fear uh, users just won't have the patience to persevere. So what is our approach to delivering a robust, mature and flexible virtual event solution that doesn't irritate anybody? The first thing is, and, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of existing customers on this call will know that Fliplet had ha has had a, an event app solution available for a long time. And a lot of our customers are already using it. So you'll be pleased to know that what we're doing is we're starting with that as a base and we're making it even better. So I won't go through all the features that are listed on the screen. If you've used the existing event app, then you're probably aware of these features and you can see some screenshots of it on this screen. But of course, the event app is great, but it's even better when you can when you uh, connect it to Fliplet Studio. So Fliplet Studio, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, is the tool that allows you to rapidly customize your app. Uh, Fliplet Studio enables you to very rapidly brand, put content in, integrate with existing databases or other systems such as CRM, embed existing videos, PDFs, office documents, and other types of files, instantly push out updates to your apps, which is critical uh, in, in an event app situation where you've got to be able to react quickly. Uh, we already support Apple, Android, and web. Um, you can extract the data at any point. Customers are in complete control over their data with Fliplet Studio, which is a critical aspect of privacy legislation. Fliplet has Excel templates, which means that it's very quick for you to extract information from other systems, adjust it, and then upload it in a suitable format into Fliplet Studio, uh, which in turn can be used by the event app. It's got industry leading security features. It's got fantastic privacy controls, and it has built-in analytics. So we're building on top of the event app and we're building on top of all of the standard features that you're already used to in Fliplet Studio to give you an even better virtual event experience. So what are the virtual event features that we're intending to add? What we realized is that the best way to answer this question is to actually focus on the three stages of an event app, before, during, and after. So before an event, and I apologize, this is where these slides get a bit congested, but I feel that uh, this is, I think, what a lot of people have come to, to hear about. So I'm going to rattle through these quite quickly. Uh, and if you've got any questions or there's anything that confuses you, post it into the Zoom chat and hopefully I can answer it later on or my colleagues can answer it for you. So organizers before the event want to be able to upload the, the material that the event needs. They want to be able to optionally personalize agendas based on the attendee profile, for example, VIPs, partners, departments, et cetera. They obviously want to be able to configure the branding and the design. Uh, they want to be able to upload uh, holding videos or content that's shown before or after sessions. They want to be able to send invites to all attendees using pre-built email templates so they don't have to figure out what do I need to tell users to be effective interacting with this app. They want to be able to configure key features in the app, including content, feeds, polls and surveys, interactive features such as assessments, benchmarks, quizzes, checklists, calculators, prize draws, scavenger hunts. You'll notice that some of those features that I've just mentioned come from our marketing template, which we did a webinar on a couple of weeks ago. Um, the prize drawer and scavenger hunt are new interactive features that we're adding into the virtual event app. Uh, and chat rooms. Uh, organizers also want to be able to configure scheduled notifications. They want to be able to customize the, the URL for their web app um, uh, and launch mobile apps to the app store if they want them on the app stores. Um, and they want to be able to share documentation for speakers and exhibitors to reduce support issues or questions and increase their ability to extract success 
from the platform. Attendees, speakers, and exhibitors want to be able to receive their invite email. They want to be able to quickly review and accept terms and privacy agreements. They want to be able to register and configure their profile. And we're going to do our best to add LinkedIn import. We may not be able to. I have a feeling that uh, LinkedIn doesn't want us to. But if we can, we will. Um, we're also going to, after registration, uh, send a calendar invite to the, uh, to the attendee making sure that the event is in their diary. We're going to offer setup guides, which includes checklists so that people know that they're ready for the event and they're not trying to do it, hopefully, uh, once the event started. We're gonna offer frequently asked questions for common technical issues. And we're also gonna offer live chat, which will be a live registration desk chat, which is where people would go in a real world event to get help. Um, we're going to add gamification to encourage certain behavior and exploration of different features. We're going to enable people to, to, of course, browse the agenda, view the speakers, view the other attendees, and browse the exhibitors. Attendees will be able to personalize their agenda, which in turn will configure reminders, and start to request meetings with exhibitors and speakers if that's a feature you want to offer. Speakers and exhibitors will be able to set session details, upload materials, tweak their profile and configure any polls that speakers are intending to have during their session. And exhibitors will be able to set stand content, upload materials and then configure other exhibitor users. So if there's three people from that particular exhibitor that are gonna be attending, um, one exhibitor can invite their colleagues. Uh, the speakers and exhibitor features you may notice are, are designed so that the speakers and exhibitors can contribute their own session or their own exhibition information without the organizers having to get involved. I'm aware not all organizations will want to work that way. And of course, organizers can set speakers and exhibitor information up for them and disable those features if they don't want them. But we've found many customers prefer to just ask speakers and exhibitors to configure their own content. It just reduces one more admin task. During the event, organizers uh, actually, hopefully, don't have to do very much. Uh, I'm sure that most event organizers are probably quite happy to hear that for a change. Um, during the event, uh, we, we hope organizers will engage with attendees via, via the chat system. Um, they'll start and stop sessions, particularly if a session's overrunning and holding up another session, they might need to intervene. Um, they will be able to send notifications. So if anything changes, uh, they, can, they can alert their attendees. Uh, they'll be able to view real-time usage reports and of course, make any changes if content is out of date. Attendees during the event will primarily be able to attend sessions, which I'm sure you're all hoping they would be able to. They'll also be able to receive reminders for upcoming sessions based on their personalized agenda. They'll be able to view live and pre-recorded sessions. Uh, and we hope that we'll be able to automatically take the recordings from sessions, load them back into the app, and therefore enable sessions to go from being live to on demand seamlessly without organizers having to lift a finger. We'll see if we're able to do that depending on our technology uh, providers. Uh, attendees will be able to request follow-up materials from sessions and exhibitors. They'll be able to submit polls and questions to speakers. They'll be able to network with attendees, speakers, and exhibitors. They'll be able to enterprise draws and scavenger hunts, engage with the interactive features that I mentioned earlier. And one of the most exciting features that we're intending to add is allow you to offer registration for other complementary upcoming events via the virtual event. So if I am attending an event uh, from an organization and it's on tax, and you've got an upcoming tax event next month, you can cross promote it in this app and with one click registration, I can express my interest in your future events. So I think that that will uh, enable a seamless experience for your attendees to attend more of your events. In addition, speakers will be able to run sessions, review and respond to questions that have been asked during the session and chat and meet with attendees. And exhibitors will be able to respond to meeting requests from other attendees, chat and meet with attendees, see who has attended their virtual exhibition stands uh, and share materials with attendees based on request. After the event, Organizers will be able to export data for import into their CRM so that they can then do appropriate follow-up, uh, review usage data, and you can see a screenshot of our analytics feature on this slide, 
and they'll be able to email users with saved materials. Um, so you'll see later on that attendees are able to request materials from uh, ex exhibitors or uh, sessions. Um, if I've requested it, I will get notified of that afterwards. And attendees will be able to access their requested materials from sessions, watch recorded sessions, and share sessions with other people who may not have been able to attend if you want them to, which I think is a great way to ensure that you, the, all the effort that you put into the virtual event app uh, kind of remains to be used by people who uh, want to follow up and learn more um, or share the, uh, the content with other people. And again, all of these features are optional. As I mentioned earlier, Fliplet Studio uh, enables you to turn features on and off very easily. So don't feel that just because I've mentioned it here, you have to have it. Uh, this is all of the features we intend to make available to our customers. We don't expect that you have to use 100% of them. You're probably thinking, so has Fliplet built its own Zoom competitor? Uh, and you'll be pleased to know that we have not. Uh, what we've actually decided to do is integrate Zoom and YouTube into our virtual event solution. Now you might be thinking, well, why? Because if you've used other virtual event platforms, most of them use their own tools. They don't integrate with existing tools. I personally don't think that that's a very good idea. I think that everybody is very comfortable with Zoom nowadays, particularly speakers and exhibitors. And therefore it makes the engagement between speakers, exhibitors and attendees much easier if we use tools that they're already familiar with. It reduces complexity, reduces training, it speeds up the ability for them to get using the platform. Um, we know that Zoom has uh, significantly increased their security, which is why so many organizations are now using it. Um, and uh, rather than build our own tool and then have to manage our own infrastructure, um, what we've decided to do is partner with people that have already solved uh, infrastructure problems. So Zoom webinar, for example, says it supports up to 10,000 simultaneous users and YouTube doesn't even have a limit. It's literally, if you wanted to use YouTube to run a session, you can have unlimited people uh, connect. Um, so I, I believe that by integrating with Zoom and YouTube, predominantly Zoom, we're offering an industry leading solution that, that is better than a lot of the alternatives out there. Um, the other nice thing is uh, Zoom and YouTube can be used for live streaming, but they can also be used to deliver on demand. So uh, a lot of the recordings or all of the recordings from Zoom sessions, we intend to uh, link back into the session so that they can then be watched on demand by the app after the session has been recorded. Enough talk, show us what it looks like. I apologize uh, for all of the bullet points I've been subjecting you to. Hopefully it hasn't been too boring so far. Now I'm gonna move into, um, I think more of an inspiration phase. Please don't, uh, please, uh, don't laugh too much at, at the photos that you're about to see of me. I was purely using myself as a poor model. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about anything you see in these screenshots that I don't address, just post the question into Zoom and my colleagues will hopefully have an answer or they'll ask me at the Q&A. So themed sessions, I've emphasized branding and I've emphasized differentiation a lot in this presentation. Let me show you what that could look like. So this is an example of what you could have if you wanted a cinema feel to your sessions. This is what you could have if you wanted a theater feel to your sessions. I told you, please go easy on my, uh, my Zoom screenshot. Um, a concert feel, if everybody's cheering because your presentation is that good. Uh, a billboard feel, uh, again, highly relevant if you're doing a marketing or uh, advertising related presentation. A forest feel, if you're looking for different ways to differentiate your, your themes, you could have a forest theme, a desert theme, uh, a beach theme. Oh, look, a tranquil feel or a, a tranquil theme. An inspiring feel, uh, an international feel by incorporating uh, kind of uh, city scenes or buildings, um, even a cosmic feel. You don't even have to be based on Earth. Um, or a branded feel. As you can see here, this is a, 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 a background from ILTA uh, earlier this year where Fliplet um, attended. So let me show you what the actual interface is expected to look like. So as you can see here in the middle, 
I've got the slides. Yes, you've seen this before. This was the opening slide to today's presentation. Um, so this is the, the slide. This is where Zoom or YouTube would be embedded. And then down below, if you're using uh, uh, Zoom, we would show the, the different speakers. Um, on the right hand side, you've got the first section, which is on now. Um, this is just an example icon, we would replace these with more appropriate icons. Um, but it's just to give you a feel for like, we would include some iconography here. And again, this can all be branded. Um, so you can see here on now is by default expanded. When I visit a session, it would explain what the session is, it would tell me when it's starting, It'd give me some more information, I can click view more. Uh, if I want to see more of the description, I can see who the speakers are. I can click on their name if I want to see their biography or profile. And I can see the available documents that will be available at the end of this session. And if I want them, I click request materials, which means the app will then make them available in my personalized document library after the session has concluded. We're also going to have up next, which, uh, which will be either everything that's coming up next in the agenda, or if you've personalized your agenda, what's next in your personalized agenda. The poll, if there's a poll for this session, you'll be able to click this and complete the poll. Uh, you'll be able to submit questions by clicking on the questions section. You'll be able to see the full agenda, uh, search and filter and modify your personalized agenda through this section. You don't need to leave the session in order to manage your agenda. Networking will display a list of other attendees so that you can browse, see who you'd like to be catching up with during the networking break. Um, and chat allows you to literally talk about either this session with other attendees um, or join any of the other chat rooms that the organizers have configured, uh, um, which can therefore range on different topics. Um, and if you click back, it'll take you back to the registration desk, which I'll show you in a second. Um, if you click close, uh, which is listed up here, uh, you will there, therefore get a, a more of a full screen view and this sidebar will collapse. So if I then click chat, it'll expand to the previous view and automatically open chat. Um, so uh, all of these uh, features will be configurable. If you want to add some additional features or additional content, um, you're more than welcome to as well. So we're really giving people not only a branded experience, but we're also giving people an extensive set of features that they can access directly in the session. And I'll talk more about why we've decided to put so many features available in the session later on in the presentation. So what will attendees see when they first arrive? Because I've just shown you what sessions will look like or could look like, but I haven't shown you what, what the registration desk or the lobby might look like. So this is kind of what we're thinking. Again, you get to completely brand it. Um, so you can see I've continued with the cosmic theme or the purple. You can see I've got uh, chat and attendees uh, as tabs under networking. I've got the latest news. This is uh, broadcast information that comes from the organizers to attract people. For example, scavenger hunt closes in 20 minutes, get your results in now, etc. cetera. Um, you can also see the event name. Uh, you can see what's up next. And then you can see the cross-sold events that I mentioned. So although I'm attending this event, I can see that this event organizer also is running a budget 2021 review and a Brexit update, which if I want to attend them, I just click register. Uh, I'll get a confirmation message that your data has been passed on to the organizer. And then these will disappear because they serve no purpose. I have, I've decided to register. If I click on this box, it will tell me some information about this event. Uh, if, I, if I don't want to click register without learning more. And you can see that we've got along the top assistance, which is almost support, uh, or the registration desk, um, sorry, the registration staff, agenda, networking, exhibitors, setup checklist that I mentioned earlier, uh, survey, document library, and of course, settings to configure your profile, notification settings, etc. So that's what we're expecting the, the, re the reception to look like. Of course, it'll be a, a bit more refined by the time we launch it, less rough square edges and, uh, and probably uh, more branded based off what customers provide as their brand colors inside Fliplet Studio. So I think one thing that um, people might be interested in is, okay, so Fliplet is notorious for building mobile apps, um, but you know, what we've seen most of today is really focusing on the web app interface. Why? 
And that's because what we've found based on our conversations with customers is that they predominantly want a web app experience for their, for their attendees uh, because as I mentioned earlier, most people are currently at home with easy access to their computer. So uh, mobile is less important during the pandemic. But in discussions with my colleagues in preparing this presentation, we realized that there are a number of advantages to also offering a mobile website uh, or mobile app to complement your uh, um, a, a virtual event uh, computer focused web app. So by offering dual device support, this enables you to register on any device. So I can go through, I can register for the event on my smartphone. I don't have to be at my computer and I can complete the registration process. Um, and actually some parts of the registration process might actually be faster on your phone because your phone tries to do pre-filling as much as possible. You can watch on the computer, but then you can use the phone as a second device. Uh, in discussing this with my colleagues, I realized this is exactly what I do when I go to events. I sit there in an auditorium, the person's on stage presenting, that's the equivalent of them being full screen. And then what I do is I use my phone to take notes, to browse the agenda, to see who's there that I can network with. If, they, if there's chat, I might start chatting with people to try to organize a catch up during the next networking break, et cetera. So I, I think that one of the benefits of offering the virtual event app also on mobile is that you're enabling people to kind of replicate the, um, the experience that they're used to replicating when they go to a real event, but with your virtual event. Um, it also enables multitasking. Um, now, one of the things that uh, we want users of your or attendees of your virtual event app to not do is leave. We want them to stay. So how do we stop them from leaving? Well, we take away as much temptation to leave as possible. And the way we do that is we give them as much engaging interactive capabilities as possible so they don't get bored and leave. Um, and so that one of the great ways to, to distract people is to get them multitasking, to have them uh, watch your session on screen and then to be using their, their phone, which could be doing other things, to then engage with the content or engage with the attendees or event. This ultimately leads to increased engagement, which is one of the key things that organizers and attendees both want. Um, and one of the other advantages is in the future, once COVID-19 and the current pandemic is behind us and we're able to go back to real life events, uh, we believe that there will be more hybrid events than ever before. And that's because a number of customers have told us, well, we typically have 100 people come to this event if it's in person, but this year, because it's virtual, we're having 400 people. And you're like, wow, you're having uh, four times more people attend this year than you did last year because it's virtual. Uh, how are you going to walk away from having that many people attending in the future? Well, you probably don't want to fly them all somewhere and, and you don't want to pay the hotel bill and the catering bill for the additional 300 people. So the best solution is to offer a hybrid event, which means 100 people are on site, just like what you did before the pandemic. Um, but you also welcome the 300 remote people who can participate from their computer. And we realized that Fliplet's virtual event app perfectly uh, um, enables both an on-site user and an off-site user to engage and have the same experience. So the, the off-site user can access the, the live streams of the event on their computer um, and they can network uh, with other people at the event, um, also uh, people that are remote to the event. Um, but the people that are actually at the physical event, they can use the mobile device that will have the agenda, they want the reminders, they want the personalized agenda, they'll want to be able to see who else is at the event, participate in chat, et cetera. But instead of watching it on their computer, they will actually go to the sessions. So the nice thing is that if you want to include an, an element of streaming, as well as have a physical event, uh, the Fliplets virtual event app template will actually support both. So, at the very beginning, uh, when we discuss the agenda, there were a number of how-to questions posed. So now I'm going to answer them. So how does this app keep audiences engaged? Well, the first thing is it makes setup as easy as possible so they don't experience any technical issues. It offers multiple interactive features to reduce other distractions. If I keep you engaged, you won't 
open the, your email or another tab or uh, start chatting to somebody else on WhatsApp. Um, we'll enable users to interact with features during sessions. You've seen an example of how we're going to do that with the sidebar. And we're going to use notifications to remind and inspire people and draw them back into the app if they do get distracted. So we've got a whole suite of capabilities, mostly automated, mostly based on what the attendee wants uh, or configures uh, that will be trying to, to retain the user and keep utilization of the virtual event system high. How will the virtual event app quickly create, oh, that's not a very good way to write that, uh, how to quickly create a virtual event app. So how do you quickly deliver this? So the first thing is you'll need to brand and theme the virtual event template. And as you can see, I've tried to demonstrate a number of different graphical approaches to delivering branded session screens. Um, hopefully, as you, were, as you were seeing my nice images, you were thinking about your existing image library that your organization has and thinking, oh, maybe we've got some existing images that we could actually use uh, so that you don't have to go out and either get designers to create something new or purchase new images. Um, hopefully, you're able to use existing assets. Um, you can then, or you then need to upload data via spreadsheets to avoid manual data entry. Um, and again, Fliplet's existing event app uses this method and most customers prefer it. You can then uh, use uh, tools um, that your attendees and speakers are comfortable using to again, uh, like reduce friction, reduce training um, and increase the likelihood that everybody will have a successful event. Um, you can offer a setup checklist to help attendees pre-configure their app and in turn proactively reduce support requests. You can also use the frequently asked questions and live chat built into the app to help people as and when they're configuring the app. Again, hopefully that's happening before the start of your virtual event. Um, and you can use Fliplet's, Fliplet's built-in email templates to invite attendees and in turn save yourself some significant time building out a new email template. Um, you will be able to brand Fliplet's built-in email templates and customize them. So we're not taking away any capabilities that you would expect from an email platform. We're just trying to make it faster for you. How to support attendees if they have technical issues. So um, we're gonna offer live chat um, and that, that's kind of the virtual registration desk, which is where most people would go if they had questions during an event. We're gonna create and maintain a frequently asked questions that's built into the template to answer common questions, um, which in turn means that uh, reception staff or event staff can hopefully just refer people to the frequently asked questions for the most common answers instead of having to continuously retype them into chat, which would be slow, boring. Um, we're going to offer a setup checklist to reduce issues. So the checklist will be um, uh, kind of a list of tasks that we encourage people to do, and it'll link off to various parts of the app. It won't include just uh, go and configure this, but it'll also include things like um, go and browse the attendee directory and contact at least one person who you'd like to meet during the event. So we're trying to encourage them to engage with the features and learn how to use the features of the virtual event app before the event starts so that when the event starts, they're not struggling with things that they could have spent time learning beforehand. But of course, we're going to have to make that fun, engaging, uh, and, um, and not feel like a chore or people won't do it. And then finally, we're using existing technologies that are very robust. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and we're hopefully using technologies that most organizations are already using themselves, which in further reduces information security risk. So how to monitor users and measure the impact of your app. So the virtual event app uh, template will use Fliplet's existing analytics features and you'll be able to um, enable them via Fliplet Studio uh, and you'll be able to access them via Fliplet Studio uh, or via Fliplet Viewer um, and they are updated in real time so you can basically load them up and you can see how many people are in which session. Um, you'll also be able to export your survey responses uh, um, the surveys can be uh, a survey for each session or they can be an event survey. It's entirely up to you. And of course, that will give you not just, uh, um, that will give you qualitative data, 
whereas the analytics will only give you quantitative data. So hopefully using those two pieces of data, you can get some very high value feedback from your attendees. And then more a recommendation, uh, we, we would encourage you to ensure that in your terms and your privacy policy that people have to accept when registering for the app, that you state what data you're collecting and why, but also that you don't, unless you really want to, uh, not know what users are doing, you don't allow them to opt out. Uh, a lot of platforms will just make it mandatory that look, if you're using our app, we need to know what you've done. Obviously, I'm not encouraging you to collect data you don't need, which is uh, kind of not allowed under GDPR. I'm just suggesting you be upfront about what we're going to collect, but you don't necessarily make it optional because otherwise you have big gaps in your data and you're unable to analyze what people really got value from. So, if you've liked what you've heard and you'd like to get started, um, we will have a detailed app plan ready next week, which will enable you to share a, a document with your customers, sorry, with your colleagues, uh, which you can then start to prepare uh, um, whether or not you would like to use the virtual event app. And of course, uh, the sales team and the account management team and the customer success team and I would welcome any feedback on the app plan. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with an app plan, it's almost a brief document that outlines what we're intending to do. We intend for the beta to be due uh, and available in January 2021. And then uh, um, we expect the final version will be due in March 2021. Uh, we're hoping we can bring these dates forward. Um, but uh, I think that at the moment, based on how busy we are, uh, I believe that these are, are realistic dates. Um, Obviously, if you've got any other questions, you can contact Fliplet at any time. Um, so we're up to the Q&A. Uh, hopefully, you guys have been uh, sharing some interesting stuff on the Zoom chat, which I've been ignoring to try to get through these uh, slides as efficiently as possible. Um, are there any questions, Chris? So are there any questions, Ian? Uh, <laughs> just a few. OK, no, I'll normally brace I, myself. Normally, I love watching your webinars. I've not seen any of that, Ian, so I hope it was good. I hope it went well. Yeah. Um, yes, and I've, I've tried to group them as best I can for you, but I apologize if um, some are a little bit repetitive, but here we go. So uh, uh, nice easy one to start with. Is the event functionality available on web browser without having to make delegates download an app? Yes, yep, exactly. Um, yes, it is. Fantastic, that's a nice quick one to start with. Um, and can we turn off functionality? So example, email invites, if we don't require them, we manage that on another program. And I'm going to lead in with integrations in a second as well. Yes, you can. Um, and, and just on that then, Ian, so you can, when we're talking about functionality, you can turn off various bits within the app, not just the, um, the invite section. Yes. Yep, you could, you could disable all, all emails if that's what you wanted to do. Um, uh, I'm not sure you'd want to, for example, like forgot password and things like that. You probably would want to keep some of those really kind of quite fundamental ones. But yes, uh, my understanding is even if you didn't want to use our system to send emails, uh, please just copy the templates that we're providing because they will give instructions for speakers, exhibitors and attendees. And it'll save you having to figure out, you know, what do I need to send people? Brilliant. Fantastic. So I'm going to ask you two in one now, but they're both to do with integrations and they are uh, interlinked. Um, mm -hmm. So can you get the app to transfer data and information back and forth to our internal systems, such as interaction? And, and following on from that as well is, um, would we send a link to the app via our own invitation system? We use Vuture, which integrates with our CRM system. Yep. Yes, you can send invites via your email software, which integrates with your CRM and interaction and future are two very common integrations in the legal industry. Um, and sorry, what was the first part? Uh, so that was about interaction. Um, so, oh, so can, can you get data, data to both back, ways? Back and forth data, yes. Yeah, so Fliplet has a data integration uh, uh, feature, which we call the data integration service. And that does enable you to sync data both ways from uh, Fliplet to uh, third-party tools such as uh, Interaction and back. Um, uh, we also have, if we can't get a live integration set up, which sometimes can be difficult depending on your CRM or your uh, IT team uh, and kind of uh, whether or not they have time to configure it. Uh, the other option you've got is also um, 
uh, Excel or CSV import export. So what a lot of customers are already doing for event apps is they export data from their CRM, they tweak the column headings, they import that data into Fliplet Studio, for example, to set up all the registered attendees. Um, and then after the event is done, um, once they've got say the analytics information or the attendance information, they then export that uh, from Fliplet, tweak the, the spreadsheet and import it back into interaction. Um, so, so you can do it in real time, but you could also do it uh, manually once before the event uh, and then kind of reverse it after the event. Fantastic, thank you. So I'm gonna link two more together because again, they're, they're in the same sort of area. Um, so also, could, so could we use the video stream from our current webinar provider instead of Zoom? Our, organi our organization doesn't let us use Zoom. And then just going one step further than that, we've got a very specific question on if I wanted to use MS Teams to be the main source of live video feed, would that be easy to do? And what would the process look like? Okay, so Fliplet does have existing integrations with lots of other tools. I predominantly focused around uh, Zoom and YouTube because they're the ones that we've had most uh, discussions with our customers about using to date. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't embed other tools uh, with the proviso that different tools have different embed restrictions. So one of the great things about Zoom, uh, which you saw in the mockups, is that uh, we have a lot of control over how it looks. So we can literally disable all of the standard Zoom interface buttons and replace them with our own. And we can literally just use Zoom as a pure streaming technology behind the scenes. But your organizers and your speakers are using the Zoom software in order to uh, connect and stream from their computer. So they're using a tool they're already familiar with. Um, embedding other tools, we just need to give it a go and it might restrict the level of configuration that you have because uh, Zoom in particular has some pretty advanced developer features, but I'm aware that not all third-party platforms really uh, enable developers to to customize the the system as much as zoom does so i think the short answer is uh as long as there's a web version i'm sure we can give it a go and and just um to, to finish that off as well then and the process would be really talking to us specifically about what solution you're looking to to, to do and we can then advise and uh, and help so uh, next question. So can information that is available at the event, i.e. presentation slides or videos, be shared with other colleagues that are not attending? Yes. Yep, that's entirely up to you. So Fliplet does have social share capabilities already built in uh, to Fliplet. Um, they're generally incorporated into our news feeds. Um, and uh, if you want to enable them, you just tick a box and then you end up having the ability to one click share out to Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, and there's lots of other platforms we support, but they're the main ones our customers are interested in. Um, so yes, uh, that's exactly uh, what we hope uh, attendees uh, will do um, because uh, particularly if it's a marketing event, like the more people who are engaging with the, the material, the better. Fantastic. Okay. And just sort of on that, um, am I able to view live sessions that I have missed later or download the recording from the event app? Yes. Yeah. So what we're intending to do is once the session completes uh, and assuming that somebody is using uh, a tool like Zoom that can be set up to automatically record sessions, what we're intending to do is to get the, the um, recording link once it's been uh, processed and automatically put that into the session. So for example, if I go into a session and it's currently in progress, I would see the live Zoom feed. But let's say there was another session that I also wanted to attend. So I decided to go to that session and I decided two hours later during the lunch break to revisit the session I wasn't able to attend in the morning, that would then start automatically playing the recording that has been stored by Zoom. Um, so yes, uh, um, this also I think adds a lot of uh, additional value for people to revisit the, the um, event app after the event has completed because it's the one place they can go to get all of the recordings. Fantastic, thank you. And just a, a clarification um, question. So delegates would log into the Flipper app and not have to log into Zoom at all. 
Yes, so we've invested quite a lot of effort um, ensuring that the information that the app knows about you, for example, in my case, that I'm Ian Broom, it would pass that information to Zoom automatically. So as soon as I go into a session, uh, the app would say to Zoom, hey, here's Ian Broom, start playing the appropriate Zoom call details. And it would just load and start. It's as seamless as possible. Um, the only thing that the end user may have to tweak is just, uh, and again, this is entirely up to you, depending on if they even need this, is um, if they are going to contribute at all, they might need to adjust their audio or video settings. But other than that, we're intending to, to basically disable all the default Zoom interface features, uh, because um, if you're, contributing material, you're probably going to be using the Zoom app. If you're receiving the material, then you'll be accessing it via the, the Fliplet virtual event app, um, which means you don't need all the standard Zoom features. Fantastic. And I'm loving our attendees today because they're just turning it up for me. So the next one that leads on for that is um, how would this affect if you use the dialing options rather than the computer audio? That's a great and point. I can yeah, I think um, if you dial in, you might have to provide additional information um, or it, you might show up as just an unknown. I don't think we want to disable the dial in features uh, because I think if people are having network connection problems or uh, maybe they've got a great hands free phone and they just prefer using it, um, I think we want to allow them like however they want to consume the, the audio is entirely up to them. Um, and so, uh, yeah. I, I think that's definitely something that we can do. Um, exactly what ends up happening uh, from the end user's perspective, we just have to test it. Brilliant. Okay, I'm conscious of time, but I've got a couple more that I want to get, uh, get through. Um, so I'm going to link these two together um, as well. So um, will all these options be available on the multi-event template? That must be from an existing client. Um, and, and can the event app be used for multiple events or different apps for every event? Yeah, so I think if you were going to use all the features that I highlighted today, I would probably encourage you to have different uh, different apps. Um, there's no reason why once one event finishes, you can't recycle the app, assuming that you don't want attendees to revisit the app afterwards. Um, so you could you could literally. Look, for example, um, let's say that you were having internal staff facing events with the virtual event app, there might be a good reason for you to recycle it. Like we do the same training every month. So in that case, you could just, um, yeah, you could just cycle out kind of only a few pieces of data, swap a couple of dates and, and off you go. Um, if you wanted to use all the features and the whole kind of theme and the content changed, then I probably would recommend you duplicating the app um, and then modifying the data, modifying the settings and launching it again. That would still take a significantly less amount of time than building it up from scratch from the template and applying all your brand settings and, and other features. Uh, and of course, it would dramatically reduce any testing that you would want to do as well. In relation to multi-event apps, Fliplet does have a multi-event app uh, template. Um, it hasn't, it's been launched to a couple of customers. Um, I don't think it's it's kind of completely polished yet for prime time. And uh, what it will, it, it's predominantly designed for the smaller events. So if you wanted a very simple, uh, say multi-event app that had the ability for you to access the, the streams and things like that. Yes, you could definitely use our multi-event app template for that. But again, if you wanted some of the more sophisticated features, I anticipate the complexity of trying to support multiple sophisticated features for multiple apps um, would probably be hard and it's probably easier just to, to create multiple or as I say, recycle them. Fantastic. Two more very quick ones. I've got one that's just come in. So I want to ask that. Um, and it might be a very quick answer, I think. So one client is saying they don't use Zoom um, for various reasons. Um, does Flipper integrate with GoToMeeting? Yeah, anything that supports web, we should be able to integrate with. As I mentioned earlier, it's just possibly going to limit the level of control we have. Uh, Zoom offers a lot of control over the design and layout and controlling of what features are available. Other tools are not intended to be as configurable. So although I'm sure we can embed them, um, we might lose some of the brand and design settings. Fantastic. Okay. And I will make this the, the last one. So how is pricing determined? Are we assigned an account manager to help us through the process and any US-based support? 
I feel like uh, that's a question you should answer, Chris. <laughs> so maybe start with just introducing yourself I'm, and, and what your uh, role. Yeah, all, all I'll say there is that, yes, I am Chris Wongyo. I'm the account manager for our, uh, our clients. And yes, we do have a uh, US-based support. Um, the event app template will be part of our, um, our standard suite of templates. So, so yes, there you go, Ian. I'll, uh, I'll answer the last question for you. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so I've just got a couple of remaining slides that I'll quickly go through. So we have some upcoming webinars you might be interested in. So the first one is uh, an, a webinar called Awesome Apps Produced by Law Firms and How to Build Your Own. Um, that is going to be held on the 17th of November uh, and is going to cover basically awesome legal apps uh, across the whole gamut of, uh, of what law firms uh, can do with Fliplet and are doing with Fliplet. So if you'd like to, to kind of find out what the industry is using Fliplet for, uh, sign up for that. Um, and uh, we also have an on-demand uh, webinar coming up soon, which is how to get the most out of the new marketing uh, app template. And that will be uh, uh, posted soon and sent out via social media and email marketing. So keep an eye on that, uh, particularly if you were interested in some of the interactive features that I mentioned, such as the assessment, the quiz, the benchmark, the decision tree, etc. because all of those features are going to be built into this upcoming marketing app. And you can find out more information about these and sign up at fliplet.com slash webinars. So thank you so much for attending. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope I didn't kill you with bullet points. Um, I've really appreciated the questions that you've asked um, and we will be sharing this recording tomorrow. So just like somebody asked, you will be able to share this with your colleagues very soon. Um, and if you've got any questions, you can get in touch with anybody at Fliplet. And if you're not sure who to contact, just email support at fliplet.com with your questions and we'll forward them to the right team. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and I hope you have a fantastic day.